Thank you so much. We appreciate that welcome. We appreciate the brass fanfare. Wasn't that a little special? Um, you may hear a little more of the brass outside before we finish. So today, um, what we're doing in this service is obviously starting here in the church, and we're going to share some stories. And a little later, after the choir has sung, we will invite you all to move outside where we will do the official ribbon cutting and, and declaring the extension open. And I guess in welcoming you, I have a number of people that we would want to acknowledge in terms of their presence. And partly I want to go back first to the, the origins of this church. And if you go back to some of the dates we've shared over um, this morning and last night, this church was originally dedicated for its current purpose back in March of 1981. And at that point, it was Neville Wilson and Carl Stoneman that were probably the key drivers of that project. And I heard some great stories over lunch of Sundays where, how, how could I put it? It wasn't just an invitation, it was an expectation that you would go on the roster to come and help build this church on a Sunday. Um, and it got done. And here it is all these years later. And so as we, we celebrate what has happened over the last couple of years, we stand on the foundation of what people like Carl Stoneman and Neville Wilson and so many others contributed to in the first place. Then if we fast forward down to about 2007, um, on which occasion I was, that was before I was recycled as the pastor here, so that was my first, my, my first coming. Um, <laughs> we'll just keep moving. <laughs> and with that, that first extension, it was actually Ron Paul who was the, the, the driver on the, the building of that. And Ron and Bev, who are both of them no, no, no longer with us, of course, like the others that came before them, gave sacrificially to build that first extension. And I'll just note too, for those of you that, that would remember, Bernard Jakovac was initially the project manager on that one. And when Bernard um, was, was taken away to Sydney for a job up there, it was Tim McLaughlin that stepped into the shoes of managing that project. So we acknowledged that one. And then of course we come to 2023 and without Glenn Jackson, the building would not be. Full stop. There are many others we would like to acknowledge on that, but we'll do that a little later. I guess there are some present that I, that I do want to acknowledge. Firstly, I want to ask all those that are foundation members of this church to be upstanding. I think it's worth giving them a hand. I will let you sit down again, that's okay. Without what you started, we would not have what we now have. And we, we are grateful for that. I want to keep going though. Those who were here, and so you might have to stand up more than once, um, those that were here and part of this church in the 1980s, I'd invite you to stand. Oh, look at that, that's a few more. All right, you can stay standing because we're going to start keep adding to this. What about the 1990s? Look at that, that's a few more again. Let's come to the 2000s, the noughties, the, the, the zeros. All right. What about the 2010s? That's it. There's definitely some that are 2010. What about 2020s? Look at that. And you can all be seated.
I do want to acknowledge some others that are present with us. Councillor Len Cox. Um, Len has been a long-time friend of Lilydale Church and um, we've seen Len darken these, these doors <laughs> more, than, more than once over the years. And I know that, that Len and a bunch of the, the, the men and some ladies from this church used to walk around Lilydale Lake on a Sunday morning for many years together. And, um, yeah, a, a healthy thing, because I'd always stop at McDonald's after that. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome Peter Loss from across the road, from our friends, uh, the Baptist Church. Um, Peter, why don't you stand up so we, we know who you are. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> Peter's a very gracious neighbour to have, and we're very grateful for good neighbours. And I'd also like to welcome Liam and Dean. Liam... Oh, there they are. They're standing up the back. We have got seats for you. <laughs> Le Liam and Dean are from the Sanctuary Church that hires this church and uses it on a Sunday and a few other nights and other times through the week as well when, when we arrange it. So, um, <laughs> we, we're really glad you guys can be with us as well. Um, I want to also acknowledge Neville Callum. Kellum, Neville, where is Neville? Here he is. Um, Neville came to us via Puffing Billy and a connection from Woody. And Neville was the co-opted independent set of eyes that came in and he was invited in to have a look around the church and say, here's some ideas of what you could do with signage and, and the way it's looked. And so there's a number of things that we're happy to say Neville sparked the idea. And Neville, we're glad you're here with us. I also want to say thank you to Tim Borgus. I saw you there somewhere. Tim is the principal up at Edinburgh College. And we love the good relationship we have with Edinburgh College. And so we wanted Tim and Liz to be here. And we're really grateful that you are. I guess the irony of a gathering like this is we come to celebrate some building work that's being done. But the point of what we're doing is not about the building. But it is, but it's not. The building is fantastic. What the building enables us to do by way of ministry, particularly with our kids and our teens and our youth, it ticks all the boxes we wanted. But I guess it's like anything. A church is the gathering of people, not the building in which we meet. So the building is, if you like, a means to an end. And one day the Lord's going to return and he's going to burn this building to the ground. <laughs> and to that, yeah, Glenn, good work. Let's burn it down. <laughs> but I guess in all seriousness... We actually look forward to that day because it'll mean its purpose is completed. Um, so before we go further, I want to actually invite my immediate past predecessor to come and join me for a moment, um, Pastor Rob Steed. Ro Rob and I have sort of followed each other around a little bit, haven't we? Quite a bit, yeah. So I thought before we, after we do a prayer, we're going to come back and share the story from about the onset of COVID on. But there was a story that happened before we got to COVID. So, Rob, just give us a brief insight as to... Brief? Hmm. Oh, I that, that's, that. that's the brief, yes. Well, the facts are that all of this is Bruce Manor's fault. <laughs> Bruce, uh, senior pastor, in an elders meeting, uh, decided it was important that we do a review and look at the needs of our church. And that process came up with a number of items that uh, we believed needed to be addressed. One was a dedicated space for our high school ministry. Remember the high schools were in the hall for many years, a um, bit of a thoroughfare there. Secondly, um, we needed more floor space for our adult Bible study groups because you know when you get a group that's too big only a few people do all the talking so 
multiplying class, Sabbath school classes, was really important. We also um, saw a real need to have a, a space for our welfare ministry, our sewing group. Um, you know, they were meeting over in the transportable, which was used as a Sabbath school room as well on Sabbath, so they'd be packing up, putting away and all this, which, you know, it's not, not a great idea when you've got sewing machines and whatever else. So we, we were looking for a, a space that can be their space alone. And I know I'm forgetting that there's at least one other, uh, one other area uh, that we wanted. Um, but that, that's basically, that review stimulated, um, hey, it's time to extend again. And from that conclusion, Bruce retired. <laughs> and said, here, are, Rob, it's all yours. So then a, a team was put together, a building team, and there are various people on that. I won't go through all the names. Um, we, we found uh, we had a recommended uh, drafts um, company put together a plan for us, which was reviewed and examined and chopped and changed. Uh, it was enlarged. Um, seriously, it's a big extension. Have you noticed that? I don't know whether you've walked through it, but uh, there's a lot of space out there, which is fantastic. And um, there were some really key people, and I don't really want to go through the committee, but I do need to make mention, I mean, Glenn's the obvious one. And I'd have to say, we did invite Glenn into this building committee, and it was in that committee where Glenn volunteered his time. And, and... <laughs> I'm looking for you, Glenn. Where are you, Glenn? Am I telling this story he's, right? He's hiding. Yeah. And, uh, you know, seriously, without that, that voluntary commitment uh, would have been a tall task financially. The other person who was highly significant was Jeff Rippingale. Jeff uh, was my go-to person between the council. I mean, they're difficult people, these council. <laughs> I mean, they're hard to get on with. No, actually, they've been very good. Been very good. But Jeff was the man who, who had experience and uh, he took care of that side of things. And uh, really, the next largest challenge got the plan into council. The next big thing was fundraising. And I should have keyed Peter Lynch up on this, but we fundraised for two years at least two years in my time. And there was some very creative fundraising went on. And, you know, we even had an Indian restaurant, Prim. I went to him and said, Prim, uh, can we run some dinners at your establishment and share the profits with you a bit for a fundraiser? And Prim said to me, he said, um, I said to him, so what, what would that cost us? He said, what do you want it to cost you? <laughs> and I thought he should at least get $10 per person when we're charging them 25 Surely that's fair. So he was fantastic. Um, yeah, Indian, Indian food helped build our extension. <laughs> um, but just in finishing, because it was meant to be a brief <laughs> introduction. <laughs> Are you going to be that long-winded? Oh, long Yeah, yeah. OK. Let, let me say this, that people ask me, did it turn out like you hoped for? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when I first came, this is going back, uh, what, a month or so now, a few months, when I walked up that driveway, I thought, this, this is like being on the catwalk, isn't it? You feel, or the red carpet's been right. It's, you feel really important walking into this church. The entrance is just amazing. And I love what has been done in the, in the rooms. High school room, senior youth room, the furnishing. I mean, this, these rooms belong to our young people. And that's the most important message of this building program. 
But the other thing that really excites me, I'll finish on this one, Darren. <laughs> you know, the Americans have the Statue of Liberty. The French have the Eiffel Tower. The English have Trafalgar Square. Lilydale has the most fantastic foyer in any church <laughs> in Melbourne, probably Australia. <laughs> you stand there and you look at this foyer, couches, it conveys a message of welcome. Welcome to strangers, newcomers, and welcome to our members. And you know, really, furniture and space can either facilitate or inhibit relationship building. And the, the closer we are as a congregation, the more we represent who God is. So yeah, thanks Darren. God bless you as you use this extension for God's purpose. Fraser, come and lead us in prayer. Yeah. Privileged to be here. I was, uh, had, the, had the joy of being a pastor here in 2015 and 2016. And then this church family, along with a few others, uh, affirmed my call to ministry on the 21st of January, 2017. Um, so Lily has a special place in my heart and my family's heart, so it's a privilege to be here with you. And I just want to invite you to, to bow your heads as we pray and invite God to be in this space with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a good God. We thank you for your blessings that you reveal to us and you shower down on us each day. And today, Lord, as we gather together on this Sabbath to give you the glory and the praise for what you've done here at Lilydale, for the beauty of having this facility where we can meet, where we can worship, where we can build relationships, we want to give you all the glory for that. And Father, through this, this time that we have together, we are going to be reflecting on the past, looking forward to the future, and we're also going to be dedicating this building and this, uh, this extension to you. I pray, God, that as we do that, you, you will keep at the front of our minds that the purpose of this is, yes, to bring you glory and also not just to have a building, but what that building can do, as has been said. And so we pray that this, this time and this place will always be something that is constantly growing disciples, making disciples, and a place where people can come and experience Jesus and get to know him and get to know what his body and his people look like. So, Father, as we spend this time together, we just ask that you be here, that your spirit bless us, keep us hopeful for the future, thankful for the past and just always acknowledging your presence with us right now. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The, the other thing that I should add is that we, we're going to have Pastor Graham Christian with us, our Victorian Conference President. However, today he's visiting doctors to do with a stomach upset so while we would have liked him here, under those circumstances, we would not. Um, so, yeah, do remember him in your prayers, but we, we have one or two adjustments along the way, and Woody's here to, to help me out with the story. So if we can go to the PowerPoint there, gentlemen, we are going to tell you a story about the building, but it's actually about the working of God. And it starts with this picture. So... After being invited to, to return to Lilydale Church, I arrived at the beginning of 2020, ready to go, new year, new possibilities, and within a few weeks, it was this strange thing called COVID that no, none of us had heard of, and so, you know, we had to shut the church, and I, I, I'd shared earlier, I laminated this sign that went over our sign so that people would know that we weren't open, that people couldn't come and meet here. Little did I know how long that sign would stay there. And so the, the challenge immediately became, what do we do with church? What do we do with this building program that is in train? 
when we can't meet with people, we can't meet as a church, we can't call meetings together, we, you know, we, we came up for the first few weeks with a secret studio upstairs that we, we weren't even sure whether we were supposed to do that and we didn't tell anyone where we were filming until one day the red carpet got in the shot <laughs> and it gave it away. You know, that was our meetings on Zoom and just looking at it sort of brings that back. Um, that one came from Jeff Pankhurst when we were doing communion one Sabbath. Um, you know, how do you do communion? How do you take the... How do you do that when it's like that? And so in the midst of this was this project. So how do we communicate a project? And Woody, this is where your skills came in handy. I remember when Matt and I were burning our house, um, when we were drawing the plans for it, I'd say, well, now that, that room is going to be so big. And she'd say, well, how big is that? So in the house we were in, I would get the tape and I would measure it and say, this is the size of the room, that and that. Right. So knowing that some people were then can visualise things better by making a model, I made a model of the, of the whole complex and the extension with a removable roof, which would work as a solar panel, but I and did it out that way, and it's all to HO scale for those interested in trains. So having a train buff in our midst was useful on this occasion. <laughs> it's too big for my layout. <laughs> what that meant, how many of you saw the video at that time where I got my phone and took video of the model so you could get a sense of what it looked like? Yeah, I see a number of hands or nodding heads. That helped us convey what the project was about and there'd been some tweaks and some adjustments to make it just right. Um, and of course, I just threw this one in because you remember the spoons, of course, you know, COVID. Anyway, let's, let's not get hung up on that. While all this is going on, we had to figure out how to do church life. So we, we're promoting this project, trying to communicate it out to people that were stuck at home. And so it gave us room to do other things like build this stage. Um, Tim Christian came and um, I tell you what, this stage is built to millimetre perfection. Um, Tim did a fantastic job with it. It just you know, gave us capability to do a whole lot more. In fact, that wasn't all we did because we'd also discovered along the way that the baptismal font back here wasn't really um, as we would like it. So we put the, the call out and said we need, I forget what the money was, we need X amount of dollars to do this project and within how long, do you remember? A week. Within about a week the money came and that enabled us to do that project. Which, when you're not meeting in here, why not? Let's, let's make the most of it. So we did. Um, which led us to another project um, while all this was going on. And this, this was a people project and it looked like this. The first kids club in a box. We'd been running kids clubs in the September school holidays for over a decade and it was this case of we can't possibly stop. But we can't bring anyone in. So, a lot of these pictures came out of our house. It was chaos. <laughs> we got smarter the next year, um, and you'll see a few pictures later. The next year we packed up at the school because you could allow to have a few more people to help with the packing rather than just the Croft family and one or two that were smuggled in to help. Um, and this is what it looked like at the other end, where kids got to do kids' club. Um, we had, this was Liam preaching, you know, sitting in a chair, one person in the room with Rowan running around behind the camera and the others in the control room, and that was the church as it was at that time. Then it came to the sign project, and this is one that... This is a carrier. This is a um, direct carryover from Neville's visiting us. And you'll notice now that we have... He's, he, he suggested those lovely big teardrop signs which say, welcome to church. That was one of his ideas and the playgroup use it. 
And you'll notice all the signage through the whole building. That was one of Neville's suggestions. We're very grateful. So we couldn't get that thing down quick enough and the new one up. And we thank uh, Peter Bennett for his work on that. He does a really classy job. So that was all stuff that happened through that first period of, well, I, I forget, you know, it all just blends into this one great long COVID period. Anyway, it happened during there, and we, we were able to see that one accomplished. Then we got to this first of the big cleanups because things excuse started me. getting excuse overgrown. Me. Excuse me. <laughs> if you want some pruning done, don't ask him. I will just say that after that job, excuse I had to go me. and get my chainsaw excuse, fixed. Excuse me again. Again, the direct result will be you've got to pull out everything. <laughs> there will be nothing left. But it got done. That's the main thing. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, and so, yes, you see then we finally get to that point where the build could begin. But before we could build, we had to unbuild. So this is the bricks being removed off the outside there, mostly carefully, and um, then cleaned, as you will see. How many were involved in the removal or cleaning of bricks? Yeah, we, we engaged child labour for that one, I'll just say. <laughs> um, and I think there were probably a few men on jackhammers that went home after that day that probably were not the same for some weeks afterwards. <laughs> So, so, yes, as we, we went through that, there was a bunch of other things that were able to happen at around the same time, and these pictures will, will flick up in due course. Um, given the stage was done and the font was done, it also seemed like a good idea not only to you know, dig holes out the back there and prepare for what came next, but it seemed like also a good idea to attend to some of the lighting in here. And so... Um, Rowan, who does a lot behind the scenes, and it's often not seen, but it makes a huge difference, and Woody and a few others got in here and did some work on the lighting, um, and meanwhile, the whole COVID thing continued to play out. We were all getting very good on making videos of one another and doing school remotely, or maybe we never got really very good at that, but, you know, we... We did what we had to. Um, and as I, as I reflect on it, it would have been so easy just to go into hibernation through this time and say, too hard for kids club, too hard to try and keep this rolling. And yet one of the things that I've loved about being back and, and part of this church is that kind of can-do attitude that says, OK, we've got an obstacle, but let's keep going anyway. Let's, let's find a way to make it possible. So that was a business meeting on Zoom, the joys. And so then the trusses happened. And Woody, let, let me hand to you on this story. In, in so many ways, we have seen the hand of God. We have seen miracle after miracle. Um, and this one is one of my favourites because the frame was ready to go, ready to go up but we needed to put the trusses on. And the trusses span from the end of the building right out there, 20 something metres long. We had the original quote, when we came to, to get them, they said, we can't do them. And then they came back and said- No, no, first, I'm gonna correct you on this one. Right, eh? <laughs> Remember first, the original cost, and Glenn, can, you can correct us if you need to. From my memory, the original cost was 12 grand. Oh, I'd forgotten all of that, I was just gonna round them off. Then they came back and said, we can do it for 20. Yeah. And then they came back and said, said they can't do it at all. They, they couldn't get the timber. And then they said, if you give us the timber, we'll make them. Well, we couldn't get the timber either. And Glenn said, I'm going back to my engineer and he said, engineer, give us the drawings to make the, so we can make the trusses ourselves. And there was a great stack of plywood in the, what's now the youth room and all the timber then. We, on one day we all got together, there were 25, 24, 25 guys out there and Glenn had it all laid out as a, as a template. We laid the whole thing out, cut the size, put the ply down on one side to hold it put them all up and there's, I forget how many were, there were an awful lot of them and we worked flat chat that whole day putting up those trusses. 
ready for the other guys to finish off the sides, but at least they were up and were underway. And Daniel shut us down the next day. All building sites were closed. We got them up in that one day. Had it been, yes. God is very good because if we had not got them up that day, it would have been probably months before they could have been put up and in place. You have a story to tell. Well, look at the car park. Peter, th this, involves, this involves both our Baptist friends and the sanctuary because after we'd done this on the Sunday, now remember, this was the time when you were not allowed more than five people at church. <laughs> look at the car park. The car park... Yeah, the car, block, car park was chock-a-block full. We were, we were working within the law because we were building. We weren't coming to church. <laughs> the fact that we might have prayed while we were there and had lots of conversation was Im immaterial. But I got a phone call from a lovely lady from the Baptist church over the road. And the phone call went like this. Oh, look, I just wanted to ring you to make sure... She said, I know it wouldn't be you guys because you don't meet on Sunday, so it must be the people that hire your church on the Sunday. <laughs> At which point I was really tempted to just say, oh, look, here's Liam's number. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was very kind because she said, I wanted to ring you before anyone rang any of the authorities or anything like that, just so I you know, could, could be sure. I said, look... This is what happened. It's all okay. It's within the law. And actually, if we did it on Monday or Tuesday, it would have been illegal, but on Sunday it was okay. <laughs> anyway, we got another project done during that time, and that was redoing the disabled toilet out here, um, made it much more user-friendly, and um, it had been one of those projects that we'd wanted to do for a while, and we weren't meeting, so let's get it done. So we did. Um, then we get to the building of the foyer and, Woody, there was some plaster. Let, let's, let, there's a, anyway, there's, there's a plaster there's, story. There's an, another one of these great, Len came to me. Not Len, Glenn. Sorry, mate. Glenn came to me and he said, hey, Woody, he said, I've got a problem. He said, um, I can't get the plaster. He said, uh, my two regular suppliers, he said, you just, you just can't get it anywhere. You remember this is when you, there was a shortage of building supplies? We were right in the middle of it. And I said, OK, mate, we'll just have to, we'll just see how we go. And I came back a couple of weeks later. Yeah. You got the photo? Um, no. <laughs> later. <laughs> OK, all right. <laughs> I just thought I'd drop that there's story a, in there. There's a stack of plaster in the foyer, ready to go, and you couldn't get plaster. And, and time and time again, we've had these things where things were done the day before it couldn't be done or the plaster we couldn't get and then it arrived or other things couldn't happen and yet it did happen. And it's just, I think there's been reminder after reminder that this is not just about putting up a few walls and a roof. This is about something bigger that's going on than just us. And so after, um, you know, after we got to the, yeah, so <laughs> this is when the garden got done properly. <laughs> Once I'd fixed it, then others were able to come and fix it. Um, and it might be that um, Dan Carey nearly lost a, one of his machines down a hole that we didn't know was there, but anyway. It got done and that was good. We got to Kids Club the second time and we were better at it second time round. And, you know, again, it was all recorded. Yes, don't they look lovely? Um, and the packing was done, masks and, and you know, meeting all the, the guidelines. That was in the, the Edinburgh School CAF. Thank you, Tim. Um, couldn't have done that without that. And there we go, the poor kids. Look at them with their boxes. Um, but we had more kids engaged and involved in Kids Club when we were doing it in a box than when we'd done it before COVID in person. Um, amazing. And those who got in and did that work did an amazing job. 
And then the bricks started going up and the plaster started going up and I think these slides will just keep playing. Yep, there we go. Um, and I guess the reason we're dropping in other pictures amongst this is because we want you to get the sense that this is not just about the building. The building is where church life can go on, um, but actually, you know, the building, we want it to look beautiful. We, you know, the grounds got to a place where they really needed attention and so they're working bees along the way when we could do that and not come to church. Um, and it just... The building is what enables the people and the... You're hearing it? The church is about the people. And so as, as the building went on, um, we, we got to a place where there were at one point a few things that were able to happen, so we made it happen really quickly. We had people, bat, you know, there were people baptised that they flashed past in pictures there. Um, and so church life was continuing as it could. By now we're sort of towards the end of 2021. And at that point, look at the building, it starts to look like something, um, but we still weren't able to meet in it. And so we did things like baptise people in here by that stage because we could do that. Um, we had on that weekend, which we touched on last night, we had 11 baptised on that weekend and it was a very special weekend. We had a grand piano that mysteriously appeared. Well, maybe not so mysteriously, but again, it was one of those ones that was just money was gifted at the, at the right time and without that gift, it wouldn't have been possible. You know, God's moving again and the building was getting closer to being done. And so that's where we come to another story the air conditioner story. Denise Barrett leads the, uh, the welcome team and Denise and Lindsay got their heads together and said, this is going to be cold out in the new foyer or it might be too hot. We think we need an air conditioner. So they rounded up all of the people involved in the, in the worship, in the, uh, the welcoming committee and said, how about we all kick in a certain amount, which they did. And then Meantime, the, the price came in for the air conditioners and it was well and truly under what we were expecting. They were able to get two air conditioners and they were installed along with the other ones that were being put in and then they looked at their funds. Now, this, this is Woodward interpretation. It might, need, it might be embellished a little bit, but the, the main aspects are there. They realised they still had some more funds and they said, hey, let's put some nice chairs in the foyer, ones that Jeff can sit in. So they went on a shopping spree and they found some chairs and got hold of Jeff and said, come on down, try them out. And Jeff tried out the chair and said, I like that one. So they said, let's buy two. Actually, we've got enough money, let's buy four. And so four chairs were bought and then a few weeks later they said, we've still got a little bit of money left over, let's go and buy another two. So that's the story of the air conditioners and the chairs out in the foyer. Yeah. And we're not going to tell you this story, but I'm just going to tell you there's a good carpet story too. Because the original plan was not for carpet to go all the way through. Um, but it happened, and the fact and the way it happened, again, is this combination of God at work and people willing to go that extra mile to make it happen. And so what we've ended up with is indeed carpet that goes right through the new extension, into the youth room, those offices in there, and right the whole way through the foyer. Um, and, well, if you want to look at the carpet... No, no. We'll... Um, Six grand. <laughs> he's done the sums already. He's measured it in here and worked out what it will, what it will cost, but we've got to keep moving. Um, so things are, are happening, there's gardening happening in this time, there's, there's things going up outside and people are, are contributing in all sorts of different ways and then in the midst of it it was like, why do we have this wretched single door that we have to file through to get into the church? Surely we can do a double door. Wasn't part of the original plan? No, it wasn't, but you can't, you can't do things like that without you get the authority. So I rang up our building surveyor, who's a very good friend of someone who's in this church, we won't say, will we? 
Um, Ashley. Um, <laughs> and he, he was our building inspector, building surveyor, and I, we said, can we add on taking off? He said, yeah, go right ahead. So, and I mentioned it to Glenn, and the next day he was into it. The very next day the walls came down. And now we have a much better entry there. Um, you've seen other bits and pieces there. This, this fence out here was built late on Saturday night before the, the kids' club last year. Um, and so, and I just, I'll go, go oh, it's going to fight me. There we go. I want to go back to that slide. That's the sort of thing that the building makes possible. That's one of the days of kids' club. Um, that's obviously with it empty. And as Rob said, great, you know, it's a great foyer. Oh, that one, that's what the youth were responsible for. Everything you see in the youth room has been chosen and purchased and funded by the youth. And so as we, as we sort of come towards the end of it, again, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's another baptism in there and we're finally getting to the ramp being built there. And what we realised at this point was the project was still not only on budget but probably slightly under budget. Which when you think about the building costs that were going up and up all through that period, it was a pretty extraordinary thing. And so we finally get to the, the, the end of that building side and we come to this. And this is where we, we finish at this time and in a moment the choir will, will come up. Um, no, the choir is not yet. We've got something. I'm, I'm just getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so new sign out the front, you know, beautiful autumn colour trees. Is that what defines us as a church? Is it... You know, the old building as it used to look with that beautiful rainbow over the church. Or maybe it's the new building. Is that what defines us as a church? And I want to suggest that none of that, none of that is what defines us as a church. Rather, it's this sort of picture. People coming together, large groups, small groups, being the people of God. And let me finish with this one. Because actually, for those of us, as we start to... And yes, I do have some grey hairs in here. You can, you can see them coming through these days. Um, which my wife is getting more and more happy about. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but the thing I want to say is, this is what the church is about. Because we don't want a church that has a really good season and then dies off. We want to have a church that grows and thrives and keeps on going, keeps on handing the torch, the mission on to the next generation and to the next until Christ comes. And I want to thank you for being part of that and for being here with us today. We have, and Woody and Faye, come up and join me because we've got some thank yous that we want to do. Um, and Glenn, I know you don't want to come up, but please, come join us for a moment. This says, our deepest thanks to Glenn Jackson for your selfless contributions of time and talent to the Lilydale SDA Church, March 25 to 23. Uh, come over here, you shy man. Um, we were trying to think of what we could ever do for Glenn to try and let him know how much we love him and appreciate everything he's done. Words aren't enough. Any silly gift was not enough. But we just want you to know from our very deepest hearts that this means so much to all of us. We have just watched you slave over this place for the last couple of years and we're blown away by it. So here's a gift voucher. It's, it's a red balloon one and it's 
a little bit of money, you can you might go ballooning. I don't care what you do. Have a great time on us because we love you. Thank you. And you're on your birthday cake too. What well, was my birthday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. There is so much more we could say, but I think it's one of those times where it's not the multiplication of words. Glenn, you have, I think, understood the depth of appreciation from this church um, at this time. There's also a bunch of other people that we do want to say thank you to and acknowledge before we, we move to the choir. Um, of course, it's not just Glenn, it's also been Ross and Daniel and other members of the Jackson family. Um, there's also been Simon Manners here doing lots of electrical work. Damien Billings was out there digging the, the, the hole, um, the foundations, I think probably is the more technically correct. <laughs> um, Dan Carey and Kendon Ridley did lots of landscaping around the place, so otherwise we probably would have still had wasps, nests and piles of dirt. Um, so thank you gentlemen. Um, Richie Stuckings spent a lot of time down here, particularly earlier in the project, and um, Lindsay Barrett also, our, our last two and current head deacons, they have just spent days and days and days um, working on this place. Ormond and Adele have done a lot in the gardens. Um, and I guess if we then look to, to others that have been working quietly around the place, these are not people that typically like to be up the front and named, but we're going to name them at the very least. And these are people like Steve and Rhonda Gilbert, um, Laurie Taylor, Anne Rosenberg. Um, and they, you know, again, have just spent hours and hours around the place doing what has needed to be done. Um, Ashley Hansen has been an immensely useful source of advice behind the scenes. Peter Lynch has kept us on track as far as the numbers go and, and just always had the up-to-date numbers. Um, behind the scenes again, Rowan Deppler, all the cabling and all that sort of thing you see, you know, hours and hours of work. And um, the other one that I, I do want to say a thank you to is... Paul Woodward because Paul Woody has a knack of being able to get in and get things done and again a lot of things have just happened because Woody's made them happen. <laughs> we of course wouldn't have done it also without Faye because Faye has just been a fantastic part of our team um, and I'll let you have a, a word in a moment if you'd like. <laughs> Faye, Faye, you couldn't go away without saying something. <laughs> um, the other thing that I just want to say as a more general sense is that everyone has contributed at working bees and you know all sorts of different ways. This week as I've been in and out of the church Every time I was here, there was somebody doing something somewhere and typically they hadn't been asked. It just, they saw a need and they did something about it and that's been absolutely awesome. Um, thank you to all who have contributed financially and we acknowledge too that the Victorian Conference um, did include a donation to the building project and we're grateful for that, that every bit's helped. Faye? Um, there's a person that he can't really thank himself and I guess I've been the token girl at most of these <laughs> meetings and just to make sure that they behave themselves. Very rarely did they do that. Um, but, yes, yeah, thanks Woody. Uh, our, our maintenance and, and building committee meetings have been an absolute joy but the whole time we've been in awe as a team at what you people are capable of. And I think our church kept moving forward despite COVID, despite everything, and it was because of you. Like I sat at home trying to bring a church service together on my computer and it was the contributions of animations and people singing and you know the kids on their trikes doing welcome to church. Uh, it was amazing. You kept 
the, the motor running even when everybody said stop. And I'm so grateful for that. But I'm really grateful for our senior pastor um, because right through all of that... <laughs> You probably don't know how much I boss him around, but um, he's always the boss, but there are times when he exerts himself and gets himself, like Darren comes over so calm all the time, doesn't he? It's amazing, we're all blown away by that. But there were, like, was it, remember when the power was out? And for the first time we could not have church online from here. And I think he was gonna have a conniption and, and I, ha I had to ring you up and say, you have to let it go. It's going to be okay. God will forgive us for not having a meeting that day. But <laughs> they managed with Rowan's great guidance to, to... There was power and there was internet up at the Croft House. So lo and behold, the church starts on time from the Croft Lounge Room with Pastor Bruce Manners preaching. And I thought... You just can't keep a good guy down, can you? <laughs> and that, that with him leading our church through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God himself, this place is destined for great things. The fact that we're always looking forward to the next generation makes me so proud to be one of your pastors. So God bless you and thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Woody. I've done talking for now. We're going to invite the choir. Actually, I do have to say that on that Sabbath, that was, that was the Sabbath of the storm. You know, that big storm that didn't get reported outside of here. Um, you should have seen Rowan. The sweat was dripping off him as he's got a camera and a laptop and he's driving this thing as a, as a one-man um, operation and um, still don't know whether it was legal, but it worked really well. So. <laughs> If the choir can come up, please. I can be first in position for once. Yeah. Folk, we're going to sing two songs with the choir. The first one is my mother's favourite, and my mother, a couple of weeks ago, turned 101. And she'll be watching this, this presentation a little later. This is her favourite song. And uh, that's why we're doing it. But this place is a place of worship. We're, this is where we can feel the presence of God. And so that's one of the reasons that I've chosen this song. The second song that we're going to do, the lyrics say, it's not about us, it's not about what we do. And I want to interpret that it's not about the extension, it's not about the building and all the great things that have happened. Great and all as that is, that's not the end. In the cross alone, we, we want a glory. And so that's why we're going to present those two songs for you.
The next part of our program will be taking place just outside the, the, uh, the new entrance. Because we have it boarded up and ready to go for the ribbon cutting, can I ask you to please go out through the church, sorry, through the hall, and then go around to come up the new path. Can you do that please, rather than going up through the foyer? Okay, that's all set to. So go out the other way. Okay, thanks folks, we'll meet you at the end in a couple of moments.